What's going on guys? Back Ash with another video. Again from 2.38 a.m. My time is my recording tends to go for whatever reason. Uh, today, I've got, an got another knife for you. Uh, not really going to be a different type of knife, just one that you don't really hear about nowadays. Uh, today, I wanted to go over my Emerson CQC7. Uh, <laughs> this is one of those knives that I think was really popular eh, 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, not really talked about it anymore. And I don't want to say for good reason, but I think there are reasons for that. And I'll get into that. Uh, just kind of quick off the note, just so, you know, as you can see, if you can see it right there, this one, this CQC7 was made in 2003. Uh, <laughs> this isn't by any means the oldest knife I have. Uh, you know, I've got some vintage you know, case knives and Remington knives and stuff like that that are older than this. But as far as a modern production knife, this is probably one of the oldest ones I have, I guess. Uh, I did not get this knife new. Uh, but if I had to guess a number off the top of my head, I've probably had this knife for 10 years-ish, somewhere around there, maybe 10 or 11 years, if I had to guess. So it's 2021 now. So 2011, if we call it 10 years. So this knife was seven or eight years old when I got it. But when I got it, it was still relatively good. It hadn't been used a whole lot. I'm sure somebody will have noticed this already. The weird, weird, uh, grind on this knife obviously you can see from your little swedge grind lines right there this is a tanto or was a tanto factory tanto blade i got this knife used on ebay and overall the knife was in really good shape but the person who bought it you could obviously tell had never owned a chisel ground knife before and that's understandable a lot of people haven't uh because honestly, off the top of my head, Emerson is one of the only production knife makers who I can think that really uses it. But uh, whoever had this knife before me obviously had never owned a chisel ground knife and definitely did not know how to sharpen it. So on the show side right here, we have a very high bevel. Uh, and I have touched this edge up multiple times since I've owned it. Because like I said, I've had this knife for probably 10 years now. But from going what the previous owner had already done to this knife there was nothing really i could do with it except just kind of keep it going how it is so i don't know what the bevel angle is on this side it's it's a pretty shallow bevel i mean I don't, I don't know, because like I said, I've just went off what the previous owner had it ground to, and I've just touched it up on that ever since then. But on this side, we have a really tall grind. And on this side, which is the chisel ground side, obviously you can see it's just completely flat on this side. There's no, it's a flat slab of steel. He did put a little bit of a bevel on this side too. I guess that was the only way he knew to really sharpen it. So anyway, just to keep from com getting comments, that's why the grind on this knife looks really weird. Uh, it's still 99% chisel ground until it gets to the edge. And then it does have a bevel on both sides. This side, it's really just a slight bevel. I pretty much do all the sharpening on this side. And once I get to this side, I just kind of make two or three passes on it just to get the burr off and call it good. Uh, but I'll kind of get into it. Uh, Again, this one was made in 2003, so it's slightly older. But again, one of the reasons I think Emerson knives have kind of a stigma about them. This is a 2003 knife. 
And it basically hasn't changed from a brand new knife you could get today up to and including the materials that are made with. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of get into all that. Uh, I guess I'll just go... Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I got this knife used about 10 years ago off of eBay. Uh, and I think, if memory serves, uh, don't quote me on this, I think I paid $90 for this knife. That was really the only reason I bought it was because it was really cheap. And at the time, it was still a fairly... It was already 10 years old, but it was a good condition knife. He had already put this weird grind on it, but all this wear wasn't there when I bought it. Uh, all the handle hardware was still black. Yes, these screws were originally all black. Now they're all rubbed off. But that's the reason I got this knife is because it was $90 on eBay. It was just a really good buy. I couldn't pass it up. So I got this knife. And I've had it for years since then. And I've just thumped on this knife. This is one of my user knives. Uh, it's not a safe queen. I've dug in the dirt with this knife. You know, anything you can think of. I paid $90 for this knife off of eBay. Like I said, that's been probably 10 years ago now. But you can still get this knife. Uh, and it still floats right around $200 uh, for a new one. I think the last time I looked on Blade HQ, uh, they were out of stock of this knife, this particular Emerson, uh, but they had it for $195 was the last listed price before it was out of stock. And I will just go ahead and tell you, I do like this knife. I would not pay $200 for this knife today. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, they're, it's a good knife. And, you know, it's got a lot of history and reputation behind it. But I do think there are better choices out there. I'll get into that. But like I said, I paid $100, $90 for mine used off of eBay. A new one, if you were to get one today, would cost, you know, between $190 and $210, $220. Somewhere in there, just depending on where you find it. Uh, overall, tip to butt, this knife is 8 inches long uh, from tip to handle. The blade is 3.3 inches so 3.3 inch blade. <clears throat> the handle length from here to here is 4.65 inches. So again, this is one of those knives before, before the phase kind of kicked off where everybody wanted measurably equal bl blade and handle length. This was before all that, which is fine with me. I don't mind a bigger handle because I do a lot of work with gloves on. And this knife, really, I can get a full full grip on this knife, no problem. But your handle is going to be about an inch, a little over an inch longer than your blade is. And overall, this knife weighs 5.2 ounces. So, a little on the chunkier side, not bad though. Uh, the blade uh, is 154CM. Uh, and that's 154CM, not CMP154. Uh, CMP 154 is a newer steel. This is 154 CM. Uh, it is a Tonto profile, or new. It was a Tonto profile. Obviously, this one, having been sharpened really bad a couple times and then maybe just having to roll with it since, it is almost just a, you know, drop point. <laughs> At this point, there's not much Tonto left to it. Uh, and again, this is a chisel ground knife. You can see all the grind is on this side and this side is completely flat. There's no grind, except for on mine because of the weird sharpening. Uh, it is a G10 handle uh, and as new, uh, Emerson G10 is fairly aggressive with the checkering, but this knife being uh, 18 years old now. The G10 has smoothed out a lot. And it's it's not slick, if you can hear it. It's still got some texture to it, but it's nowhere near as aggressive as it used to be. But it's a G10 handle, and it is a titanium liner lock. That's kind of strange. You don't see that a whole lot, even today. Uh, you see many stainless steel liner locks. Don't see a whole lot of titanium liner locks. 
And if you can tell from the use and how old this knife is and how much I've used, look where the liner is in making contact with the blade. It is all the way over. So that is disengaged. Look how far that liner kicks over. <laughs> it is almost all the way. A uh, couple more years of good use and this knife will pretty much be rosed because the, <laughs> the lock's not going to be locking to anything anymore. But it's a titanium liner lock. Uh, pretty cool knife. Uh, pretty unique knife. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit on this. I'm sure you've noticed it. Old school, the handle hardware on this knife, all the body screws are Phillips head screws. As you can see, they're all Phillips head. And the pivot is a flat head. Uh, I know modern day, nowadays, everything is a torque screw. You know, all your pivots are going to be T8, T10, you know, T15 torque screws. This is a Phillips head. Uh, I don't feel anything about that one way or the other. Uh, you know, it's 2021. Everybody who is into knives probably has six or seven different Torx bit sets. So, you know, it's not like you're not going to be able to find one. But I will say the utility of just having a flat head, if you ever did need to do something with your pivot, adjust or take your knife apart, you can do it with anything. Uh, you know, it's... This uh, pivot screw, the slot in there, it's not wide enough to use a coin. I've tried. You can't get anything down to and including a dime in there. So changes out. But you can find something. You could find something to stick down in that to get it undone if you had to. You know, So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, doesn't really make a difference to me one way or the other. Just something to note. Uh, I've heard some people complain about that, saying they don't know. And still to this day, new production Emersons, that's what they come with. They come with a Phillips head pivot, not a Torx. And I know a bunch of that, Ernest Emerson, his whole philosophy on this knife is simplicity. And I get that. And I, I, I agree with that to an extent. Uh, I've heard some other people talk about, not necessarily this model, the CQC7, just Emersons in general, how that's an outdated design. He should just go to Torx. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, if he used some type of proprietary pivot, yeah, absolutely. I do think there needs that would have to be changed. But as far as this goes, just being a flathead, it's fine with me. He can use that if he wants to. Uh, some of the things about this knife that are a little odd, as you can see, Emerson's, this one in particular, they don't use thumb studs. They use this thumb disc. Uh, it is just a little metal disc, and it does have jimping on it. A little metal disc, and again, it is just a Phillips head screw, and it screws into the top of the blade, and that's what operates as your thumb stud. Oof. Oof. Two times in a row. A little bit of wrist flick. It works fine. Uh, that is not the thumb disc fault for that. It's just this knife, the pivot on this knife is super tight. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, the last time I took this knife apart and cleaned it, probably five years ago, when I put it back together, I didn't adjust the pivot like I should have. And I just never fixed it because normally I'm not having to manually deploy this knife because of the wave feature. Uh, I know that's a very stigmatic thing with a lot of people. Uh, Emerson was the original designer of that wave feature. That way when you pull the knife out of your, if you're pulling the knife out of your pocket, that wave will hook on the lip of your pocket and open the blade as you pull it out. So if this is my pocket and I'm pulling the knife out, it will deploy the blade as you pull the knife out uh, Emerson was the one originally to design that, and I know it's been licensed off a few times. I know a few spider codes use that wave feature. I like it. Uh, you know, it's not one of those things that I think it's really game changing, but I do like it though. Uh, a bunch of people I've seen online and in reviews say that 
they don't like it because they don't always need to deploy their knife. Uh, they don't necessarily want their knife to deploy when they pull it out of their pocket. And I can understand that. I mean, I get that logic. But at the same time, anytime I'm pulling my knife out of my pocket, it's because I'm about to use my knife. <laughs> so, you know, if if the knife is going to just do it, do that for me, that way I don't have to think about it, hey, that's fine. This is one of those things, uh, it's really up to you. If if you were, in, now granted, if you were to buy a new one of these and pay $200 plus for it, you know, it's still your money and you could do what you want to do. I may not though. But if you were like me and you could find a cheap one of these for sale on eBay or something and you didn't like this, just get you a grinder and grind that off. Uh, there are a lot of people who who do that. They will just, you know, get a side grinder or Dremel tool or something and just cut that wave off and, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And it's a stainless steel blade, so you're not going to really have to worry about rusting. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. My, my throat's been acting up the last couple of days. Been kind of scratchy. Uh, but now that all that is out of the way, all the kind of specs and features on this knife, I'll just kind of go over a few things that I guess I feel about this knife. You can see you have a lanyard hole. I don't care. Y'all know my feelings on lanyard holes. I can give two rips if, if I can put a lanyard on there or not. But as far as this knife and how relevant it is today, in 2021, uh, if you want my honest answer, it's really not. Uh, <laughs> and I hate to say that because I really do like this knife. Again, I've had this knife for 10 years now. And when I got this knife, it looked new. Besides this funky grind, this knife looked new. You can see all this blade wear, all that, all this pocket clip wear. That's all for me. That's all for me carrying and using this knife. So I clearly do like this knife. I do carry this knife. Not so much anymore, but over the years I have carried and used this knife a lot. This has been a real workhorse knife for me. Kind of like a bunch of my cold steels. Uh, but I just don't feel like this knife is near as relevant today in 2021 as it was in years past. Uh, and it's not so much the design. I mean, the design honestly hasn't changed. I mean, since this knife really came out, the design really hasn't changed, uh, the basic design. Now, he now has a model with a flipper tab. It's got a flipper coming off the bottom right here. But honestly, besides that, that's really the only update this knife has had since it came out. I mean, this knife hasn't changed any. And I think that's one of the things that makes it not near as relevant. You can't just rest on your laurels, you know, forever. You have to do something to stay relevant, something to stay competitive. And that's one thing I feel like Emerson's kind of fell short on. Now, granted, Emerson has other knives. Obviously, the CQC7 isn't the only knife that they have. But this is where it started. I mean... This, the A100, I mean, this is this is the original. You know, this is what this is what got it going. And I can understand not wanting to mess with it, you know, but at the same time, if you still want to sell it, because at the end of the day, you're making these knives to sell to make money, you have to stay relevant, and that's the issue. This knife is from 2003. This knife I'm holding. My knife it was made in 2003, and it has a 154 cm stainless steel blade. This knife new today costs 200 plus dollars, and guess what? The guess what the blade still is? It's 154 cm on a 200 knife in 2021. It's a 154 cm steel blade. I mean, you can get Chinese knives. Hell, you can get American knives with S30V for a hundred dollars. I mean, I mean, just one I can one to name off the top of my head. I mean, look at the 
giant mouse ace on it. I mean, it's an Italian made knife with M390 steel for $90. And you're expecting me to pay 200 plus dollars for 154 cm it's just tough i mean it's still a good knife i mean it still performs any task i really need it to do but at some point it kind of has to you know you have to evolve you have to evolve i mean that's the whole theory of evolution i mean if you don't evolve you die you know you have to be able to change and adjust to you know what's going on and I just don't feel like they've really done that with this knife. I mean, this knife was expensive when it first came out. It's still expensive now. But now materials and technology have come such a long way. But this knife is still charging that premium price for materials that haven't been premium for a long time. Now, 154 CM is a great steel. It's one of my favorite knife steels. But... You know, there are better options. You know, at this price point, at $200 plus, you know, I at least want S30V, S35, you know, something. Something besides 154CM. But overall, this is a good knife. I mean, there's nothing besides the outdated materials used, and I think it's overpriced because of that. Besides that, it's still a good knife. Uh... Again, this knife is, you know, 18 years old now, and it's still just as, I mean, there's no blade play up, down, side to side. It's still just as solid as the day it was when it was made, and it's held up good, and I've abused this knife. Uh, it's been a great knife. It's still a great knife, and I'm sure I will continue to use this knife until that until that lock inevitably wears all the way across and it no longer locks the blade in place. But it's just, if you were to ask me today, hey, I kind of want one of those CQC7s, you know, should I get one? I would tell you, if you can find one like I did, half off or cheaper, you know, second hand, sure, go for it. But there are just too many other knives today that are such a better value than this knife is. There's no way I'd pay $200 for this knife today, no. Uh, and, you know, it's just one of those things. And Emerson's kind of whole thing with this knife was it's the ultimate hard use, tactical, you know, folding knife. You know, in 2003, maybe, you know, you didn't have as many choices. Today, do I think this is like the most hard use folding knife? No, not by a long shot. I mean, pretty much any, well, hell, I've got it in my pocket right now. I guess I'll pull it out. Cold Steel Recon 1. Triad lock, you know, I mean, just comparing those. I mean, I've got three quarters more blade on the Recon 1. I've got better steel on the Recon 1. I've got more handle on the Recon 1. I've got a stronger lock, in my opinion, with the triad lock, on the Recon 1. And the Recon 1 is half the price of this Emerson. A new Recon 1 is $100. This knife new is still $200. You know, which one would I take? If you told me I was going to get in a knife fight when I left the house today, which knife do you think I'm going to take? Am I going to take the Emerson? No, I'm going to ta I'm going to take the Recon 1. And that's just an example. I mean, it's still a good knife. It's still a relevant knife. But it's just not, it's not this pinnacle that it was kind of marketed to be when it first came out. Today, there's a lot better options. And that's all I really have to say on it. Uh, still a good knife. If you can find one used cheap, hell, pick one up. It's a cool knife. Uh, real quick, I'll throw a couple size comparisons up here just to show you. Uh, up top, there's the Paramilitary 2. And down on bottom, 
there's the QSP Penguin. As you can see, they're all relatively, you know, fairly close. Paramilitary is just a little bit longer than the CQC-7. The QSP Penguin is just a little bit shorter than the CQC-7. Uh, it's a decent size knife. Uh, it, it matches up a lot with the PM2, in my opinion, in the way it's designed as far as handle to blade ratio. Uh, you get a lot more handle than you do blade. They're just kind of similar in that aspect. Uh, but overall, cool knife. Uh, no way I'd pay $200 for a new one today. But again, if you can find a used one and you're okay with the chisel grind, which I'm not going to get into that. Uh, chisel grind has a lot of, I guess, pros and cons to it uh, as far as how it cuts. Uh, just as a general summarization for what I think about the chisel grind, for a tactical knife, if all I'm planning on do doing with this knife is possibly stabbing people, chisel grind would be fine. Uh, but as far as just general EDC cutting task, the chisel grind is not near as good as a standard grind, a standard V grind on a knife. It just, cause it cut, it doesn't cut straight. Uh, when you cut, because the knife is only beveled to one side, when you cut, instead of just cutting straight, like most knives normally would, the chisel grind makes it want to walk to one side because you're not getting even pressure. You're not getting even pressure on the cut because one side's flat and one side's beveled. So there's my opinion. Fighting knife is fine. General purpose knife, uh, a standard grind would be better. Uh, anyway, that's all I really got to say on this knife. Uh, if you, you know, have any comments or anything about this knife, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, this is one, I know there's not really a lot of interest in this knife again in 2021, but this is one I've just had for forever. And I said, well, you know, even though it's not a popular knife, it's been through hell with me. So I figure it deserves a video. Even if nobody watches this, that's fine. I just wanted to do a review on this knife, uh, kind of give it its time in the spotlight. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. Uh, if y'all have any questions, questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, remember, if you like the video, hit that subscribe button. I know this week's been kind of slow. Uh, I normally try to post one to two times a week, uh, depending on how my work goes. But if you like, if you like the video, you like the content, subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment. It helps me out. Until next time, guys, hope y'all be safe. Y'all take it easy. 